The following video is sponsored by Luxury Playstyle. If you want some of the most amazing double-sided metal tokens for X-Wing as well as other games, head over to LuxuryPlaystyle.com and check them out. You're going to love these tokens. And if you use code VIP, you'll save 15%. Head over to LuxuryPlaystyle.com. Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, I'm going to be bringing to you my what to buy first when on a budget for... X-Wing 2nd Edition for the Rebel Faction. Now, I know that's a mouthful. If you are new here to the channel, I cover a lot of Star Wars tabletop games like X-Wing, Armada, and Legion. And if you're a veteran to the channel, well, this is the long-awaited 2.0 version for the Rebel Faction. There are seven factions in Star Wars X-Wing, so it's going to take me a long time to get through all of these. But rest assured, they are all coming. I've already done one for the Empire. I will be sure to link that at the end of the video. Also, if you're new here, there's a new round of the giveaway starting right now all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos for a $25 Amazon gift card and you can use that to pick up an expansion of your choice or whatever else you want to use it for but with that being said I'm going to go ahead and get us started with the core set uh, if you are playing Star Wars X-Wing one of the first things you're going to want to do is pick a faction and well hey if you're going to be playing the Rebels uh, you're getting an X-Wing in the core set already so that's just a great way to go now let me preface everything else in this video by just saying that it's really up to you uh, this is kind of my ideas on what I think is the best investment or best way to get you started if you're on a budget and you don't just have enough to go out and buy everything now I keep, you got to keep in mind that some people are going to have different preferences than other people, and a lot of these are kind of close, and I'm also only talking about stuff that's available in the second edition packs, because I'm not going to cover every single expansion that's available for the Rebels, because there's a lot of 1.0 stuff that is also out there, and then it's going to just get really, really convoluted, so I'm really gearing this towards newer players who are on a budget, like I think most people are. And not all, not all of us have unlimited funds. So, um, but you you need the core set to get started. It's gonna have everything that you need to play the game, at least to try out the game. It's gonna have two Tie Fighters, which granted you don't need the Tie Fighters, but if you, of course if you want to have somebody to play against, you can use those. You can play that on your t kitchen table. One X Wing is appropriately balanced usually for two Tie Fighters, and it gives you kind of a feel of the game as well as some faction differences and how some factions will fly and feel differently. In that the X Wing has shields, the Tie Fighters don't. The X Wing shoots a little bit harder, but the Tie Fighters can kind of swarm you, and that's kind of a little bit of how the Empire versus the Rebels will sometimes function. And that's kind of a good intro to the game. You're going to get Luke Skywalker, and it's going to be really cool. Now, by the way, in 2nd Edition, if you're a 1.0 player, uh, you're going to notice that this T-65 X-Wing has movable S-foils. That's right. The wings actually open and shut. And not only is that just really, really cool, but it's also a function in the game because there's a specific cards that you can flip over that show if your S-foils are, -foils are closed or they're open. So really, really cool stuff. And, uh, and so I just think it's really, it's just awesome, basically, what they've done here. Now, uh, and of course, the core set is something that you're going to want to get for any game you play. And, you know, the, every game has their own core sets, and uh, this one is no exception. So definitely start, of course, with the core set. Now, everything else that comes after this, I'm going to preface a couple, with a couple of things. First off, if there's something that you really, really, really want... Like, maybe you want to get the Millennium Falcon right away. I mean, it's cool, right? I'm sitting here in the Millennium Falcon cockpit. So, of course, the Millennium Falcon's cool. It's not, like, first on my list here. But don't let that stop you. If you can afford it and you want to go get it, get it. Because the purpose of this game is to have fun. And so, if something's going to give you more fun, but I don't rank it as high, then let that be the deciding factor, right? Your own, like if you have an opinion and you really want to get something, don't let me say not to. Let me just help inform your decision a little bit more. Okay, um, so next thing is, and this is a, a, a an asterisk on this one, the Rebel Alliance conversion kit. Now, what is the conversion kit? This is for players who played X-Wing 1st Edition and that have a whole fleet of plastic that isn't compatible with 2nd edition, this is the first thing you're going to want to buy. This is going to get you everything to bring all your 1.0 collection into 2.0, except for the core set. I still need the core set, uh, but yes. This is going to bring everything else, all of those old 1.0 collections, into 2.0. If you are a brand new player and you don't have a whole bunch of X-Wing 1.0 ships, 
don't worry about this. Uh, the only way you might want to worry about this is if somebody, if you know somebody who's selling their old X-Wing 1.0 stuff and you can get a really, really good deal on a lot of old ships, then it might be worth it because this thing's going to be about 50 bucks, depending on where you get it. And, you know, that's this a whole lot if you're not actually getting any ships because you buy this it's only cards and cardboard it's no ships it's no plastic in here you, you have a little bit of the the medium base conversion kits and stuff like that but but really uh it's 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 really no not really any plastic in here right so you, you know if you can find a, a killer deal and it's gonna and i'm not gonna talk about every possible type of deal you might find because that's gonna just vary from person to person but if you can get a, if you happen to find a really good deal or you know somebody who's just giving you all their old stuff or something like that then this might be a good idea but generally this is for players who already have a bunch of old 1.0 stuff and there's a certain number of like ships that you need to be able to get a good deal on for this to actually be worthwhile for your dollar but long story short if you're a brand new player you can probably skip over this for right now uh, and, and then just go on to my, the next thing. Now, this is what the 1.0 boxes look like. Uh, you generally don't want to buy the 1.0 boxes because, you know, you're going to be spending... They may be a little cheaper than the 2.0 boxes, but most of the stuff in there you can't use. Um, and, of course, you know, if you're on a budget... I suggest sticking to the stuff that's available in 2.0. Uh, and while all the 1.0 stuff can be converted to 2.0 with the conversion kit, uh, and you can get access to certain ships that aren't yet available in the 2.0 boxes, like maybe the E-Wing or something like that, um, I don't recommend that if you're new and on a budget. I'm really just focusing this video for the stuff that has 2.0 content. Now, I recognize that this is 1.0 content. Well, the Saw's Renegades uh, expansion has 2.0 content in it. It's the only Rebel expansion for first edition that actually has cards for both first edition and second edition because this was like the final box of first edition. And it came with it some uh, X-Wing second edition stuff. Now, the only reason I have this up so high on my list of what to buy first one on a budget is the fact that you're probably going to get this really cheap. It was about 40 bucks retail. You, a lot of times you can find it cheaper than that. And the thing is, most 2.0 ships for a small ship are 20 bucks each. And here you're getting a small and a medium ship. And both of them have moving parts, so they're both kind of deluxe ships. Uh, and you're probably going to get these for less than 40 bucks. You're probably going to get this pack for somewhere around 30 because it's an older 1.0 pack, right? Now, they were reprinting this in 2nd edition, but that kind of got put on hold. And, you know, if it eventually does come out, then this might find itself back on the list in, in the black box. But but the point is, there's 2.0 cards in here. So if you get this, you don't need the 1.0 stuff, unless, of course, you happen to have a community playing 1.0. Uh, but keep in mind, the 2.0 cards, you know, that came out with this particular wave of X-Wing had, had some things that needed to be, like, errated, so some of the cards may not be that great, and, uh, and there's also some other problems with this box, but depending on the price point you can get it at, it's actually a good value, and uh, there's also the fact that you've already got an X-Wing, and this one's giving you totally different pilots. This is giving you the Saw's Partisan pilots, like, the you know, it's pilots that aren't available in the core set or even in the X-Wing expansions. So you're getting a whole different selection of pilots for the X-Wing. Additionally, you're getting a different selection of pilots for the U-Wing. The U-Wing here that's, that comes in this box also was available uh, in 1.0 as a standalone expansion. So you're just getting all kinds of different pilot and, and, and upgrades and stuff that, you're, that are coming in this pack. And so you're actually getting a lot of cool stuff. And I also recommend an extra X-Wing for a new player because, hey, you already know how to fly the X-Wing. You're already familiar with it. So this is giving you more options for something you're already familiar with. And now you'll have two X-Wings. And considering you have a whole bunch of different pilots, you have different pilots available in the core set. You have different pilots available here. Now you can fly different combinations of two different X-Wings. Like maybe you want two different saw pilots. And you have one flying Luke's Red 5. And by the way, the paint jobs on these are great. If you're new to X-Wing, you're going to love... Uh, the craftsmanship of well, most of these. This in this particular case, the X wings wings didn't open and close quite as good as the ones in the core set. So you're gonna like that one better. But the one in the core set, let me go back a little bit. Uh, this one here is actually painted to be red five. Luke Skywalker's actual paint job on his X wing, and it's like this small details that just make this game amazing. So uh, that being said, um, you're gonna get a lot in here. Even though this isn't a perfect expansion, there are some you know some 
missteps on some of the printing of the cards and the the wings weren't really you know like assembled or like the glue they put in there wasn't that great on the first print run of these so if you get one that maybe was printed later you might have better luck but there's also tutorials on youtube on how you can like you know put you know some solvent in there and fix them out or open them up and clean it out so that the wings open and close perfectly um and you know that's great but honestly the reason it's up here is you should already be familiar with the x-wing you're getting more x-wing pilots and because this is an older pack you're probably going to be able to find it really really cheap granted if you are not a big fan of the x-wing specifically you might want to just skip right over this this pack um i just think it's probably going to be a really good value and if you're on a budget you're getting two ships plus you know a small and a medium ship that u-wing you're getting ships both also with moving pieces the u-wing's wings move also which is really cool um and you're getting them for probably a great price uh, next up is just the, the t-65 x-wing expansion again and again this is trying to give you more value for the ships that you already have. If you're following my list down the line, you've already got two X-Wings. Here's another X-Wing, and by the way, totally different paint job. This is more of the standard X-Wing, um, but, but this one's going to look different than, than Luke Skywalker's X-Wing also. But you're also getting more pilots in here. You're also getting Wedge Antilles, who's like the man, right? Uh, Biggs, I, uh, you, you're getting all kinds of really cool pilots in here. Uh, and again, you can mix and match, and you can assign all you need to run an X-Wing is the X-Wing physical ship. So you can, you know, hey, you want to put Luke Skywalker in the black X-Wing, or you want to, you know, put Wedge in the black X-Wing, or whatever. You can do all that, and you're going to have a lot of different options now with three different X-Wings and, like, something like 12 different X-Wing pilots that you have available to you. So there's a lot of list-building diversity that you would have at this point uh and also this is gonna have movable wings also so a, re a really really good model uh, but again if you want more variety and different ship types you may change up your build, your buying order but i just think if you're on a budget and you're learning the basics of the game you're gonna have three x-wings by now and a u-wing you're gonna have some list diversity as far as the pilots you can go with but you'll also still be learning the game and learning how to fly the X-Wings really, really well and outfitting them differently and seeing what type of X-Wing works for you. Um, now, <clears throat> now we're going to get into some different ships, but uh, but I you know I wanted to start off here kind of building on the things that you already have. Next up is the A-Wing. Uh, now, the A-Wing's going to fly a little different, uh, and this one actually just came out not that long ago. It's actually one of the more recent expansions to come out in X-Wing 2nd Edition, and this is the RZ-1 A-Wing. It actually has a different paint job than any of the A-Wings that we've seen come over from X-Wing uh, 1.0, so it's actually a really nice little paint job on this thing, kind of to look like Phoenix Squadron from Star Wars Rebels, so if you're a fan of Star Wars Rebels, you might uh, you might recognize kind of the, uh, the color scheme on this particular type of ship. Um, but oh, it's just it's just a great ship. It's going to have a little bit of a different feel. It's going to fly very, very differently from the ships you're already at. It's a very fast ship, uh, and that's going to mean that it's going to handle, and you're going to have to plan your maneuvers a little bit differently. But also, it's going to be a weaker ship. Uh, it doesn't have the same attack that the X-Wing has, but has much higher agility. So it's, you know, a whole different... It's, and this is basically flying an interceptor uh, type of ship, and just really, really cool. Uh, ship and they're very iconic as well again if you don't like the a-wing you can totally skip this one if you love the a-wing you can get this one first i just put it i put it at this point next up is the b-wing now if i was doing this this would be the first ship i buy of course after the core set because and i think that's actually in x-wing 1.0 that was exactly what i did uh i love the b-wing the B-Wing is my favorite ship in Star Wars. Uh, definitely my favorite Rebel ship, but my, my favorite ship in Star Wars as a whole. Uh, if I was in the Star Wars universe, I'd be a B-Wing pilot. Love the B-Wing. Always have. It's just super awesome. Now, why specifically here? Uh, well, a couple of really, really cool things. So I had a lot of B-Wings uh, left over from 1.0. And, you know, I got my conversion kit. In this particular instance of the B-Wing, not only did they give it a new paint job, but they really spruced up this B-Wing. They gave it a gyro, uh, gyroscopic cockpit that actually rotates. And they didn't even need to do that. It's just really cool. So you can move the whole ship around. And the cockpit will stay stationary, or vice versa. You can, you know, this is basically the cockpit swivels in there, uh, and so you can, you, you know, and you can put it on the base, and you can have it going whichever way you want. Because the B wings are very famous for being able to fly like sideways or straight up and down, or, or at an angle, and they have all these really cool. And if you'll notice, it's kind of canted si like diagonally in the box there. That's to really demonstrate what they've done with this one whereas in 1.0 they all were just straight up and down like little uh you know like little crosses like flying but here it can be any which way you want but that's not it 
it doesn't stop there. This thing also has movable S foils, uh, and a lot of people don't see B wings with the S foils closed. But if you watch like the beginning of the Battle of Endor, you'll see a lot of those B wings when they, you know, when they get ready to do battle, the S wings do open up. And there are, did I say the S wings? The S foils do open up, and it's just awesome. And they, I mean, they didn't even need to do that. Um, now. The reason this one's a little bit lower on this list is because to actually make use of those S-Foils, there are S-Foil cards that they came out with for the B-Wings, but they don't actually come in this pack. So if you want to get, you know, the like the the best way to run the B-Wing, you're going to have to wait a little bit later because they didn't package the S-Foil cards with the B-Wing ship, which is a real missed opportunity. But it factors into some of their earlier promises. And so there's, there's political reasons why it didn't come in this pack, but... To really make this B-Wing shine, it's going to require a, a card pack that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So, uh, But, again, if you love the B-Wing like I do, you should maybe get this one first. If not, you know, I have it down the road a little bit. I mean, it's still a good ship. Uh, it's still a very tough ship. It hits hard. It's not able to dodge as many... Uh, you know, not It's not able to dodge even as good as the X-Wing. Uh, and it's a little slower. But it, it can hit like a truck, and I love it. Next up, the Y Wing. The Y Wing is uh, honestly, it's a real good ship, and a lot of for a lot of people, it may be one of the first buys they make. Uh, it may be very much higher on some other people's lists on like maybe what they would recommend, because um, I could easily see the Y Wing as being maybe your second buy. Uh, but there's some reasons why I put it a little bit lower, uh, you know. And I don't know if they've changed the way that they're producing the Y Wings, but when like. When I first got my Y-Wing, I had just gotten into X-Wing, like it didn't have target locks uh, in it. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, the, I, but the Y-Wing can take target locks and it doesn't didn't come with enough tokens to actually run itself. And so I was a little annoyed with that. And I was thinking if I was, you know, if, if, you know, if I didn't buy a whole lot of other stuff, I might not have enough tokens to even run this ship. And so if you're a new player, I would hate for you to buy a ship that you can't even fly because you don't have a target lock for it. Or you can't you, you can't even take a target lock action because you're running the Y-Wing and the X-Wing and you know, all your target locks are spent already, you know. So I, I, I felt like it was kind of incomplete. Now, that's a problem that goes away over time because once you get enough ships, you get enough pieces of cardboard, you end up having a whole lot of excess. But if it's your first buy, that could be a problem. Um, and then there's one other thing is that uh, while they redesigned this this Y-Wing, uh, they redesigned it to, um, you know, be like a, have a better sculpted body and a better paint job, uh, the turret on top is comically oversized and, at least on mine and from a lot of other people's from what I've seen, where it's completely unpainted. So as far as the physical quality of the miniature itself, uh, there's just a, a, one terrible design flaw, uh, and that is the big turret on top that just looks really bad, and it kind of makes the original 1.0 Y-Wings look a little bit better, at least because they don't have this comically oversized turret. Uh, so I, I really kind of don't really recommend this one as far as an actual miniature. Uh, outside of the turret, though, the body of the ship and everything looks great. Looks absolutely great. It's only that turret that just looks really, really weird uh, on mine and all the early ones. Now, this may be something that gets uh, corrected in, in eventual reprints of the Y-Wing, but uh, at least for like for the ones that I've seen, they came out pretty poorly. But that much aside, it's still a very solid ship. It's the first turreted ship you're likely to buy for the Rebels. So you're going to have a turret, which will have you can swivel your turret around and shoot sideways and do cool things like that. And it's going to handle very differently than the X-Wing and some of the earlier ships that you're used to. It's not super fast, uh, and it's not super agile, and it doesn't hit very hard, but it has the fact that it can take a turret or it can take missiles, it can hit hard. You put torpedoes on it, rather, uh, is very cool. It, it, it's got a lot of different roles it can perform, and it is pretty strong, so it can take uh, it can take a lot of shots before it's dead. So the Y-Wing will last for a while on, on the play field, uh, the play field, the play mat, the play field. Play, I'm trying to say play area and play field at the same time. I think I said play faria. I don't even know what that is. Faria, new word. All right, but anyway, no, the Y-Wing is going to stick around for a while on, on your tabletop, but uh, but yeah, just uh, problems with the model and the problems with like the production of that particular uh, expansion just make me kind of want to recommend it a little bit later. Until so you have some, maybe some more tokens and, uh, you know, maybe don't buy it for the model itself. Because I think the 1.0 models might have been a little bit better. Now we're getting into big ships. And they're beautiful, but they're also a little bit more expensive. Uh, and so the Ghost uh, is, is, you know, 
going to be something that maybe if you did not like Star Wars Rebels or you've never seen Star Wars Rebels, you have no connection to this ship at all, maybe you pass this one. Maybe this one's just a hard pass for you. Uh, and I can understand that. The VCX is a ship, uh, like the Ghost, you know, it's a VCX-100. Um, the Ghost is a ship that at first, when the very first time I saw it, I thought it was ugly. And it grew on me as I watched Star Wars Rebels. So this is going to be something that really kind of depends. But um, let's talk about the improvements to the ship and how be it is a beautifully designed ship uh, and it's actually a bigger box it's gonna come with a lot of different upgrade cards it's also a very very strong very tanky ship it is uh, an, it's gonna be the centerpiece of your fleet when you're flying with this it's going to really stand out it's because it's huge they did a lot of really cool things with this particular uh, expansion that improved over the ghost that existed in 1.0 first thing they did is they fixed the base. The Ghost can take a turret, and the, the, the new turret system in X-Wing 2.0 didn't really work with the original Ghost's base because it was just it just didn't fit. So basically, they, they retooled the base. It has a new base in here that's going to work with turrets, and that's great. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, they also changed the way that the, uh, the shuttle can dock with it. Now, cool thing about this particular pack, while this is the most expensive uh, large ship, for the rebels, it's and it's uh, it's gonna co you know cost you around fifty bucks dep again depending on where you get it. Um, this comes with a whole nother ship. It comes with the Sheathapede shuttle, the basically the Phantom Two. So if you've seen Star Wars Rebels, there's two different Phantoms that they will use uh, throughout the course of the show. This comes with the second one, which is a little different than the X-wing 1.0 version, which came with the Phantom One. Uh, so. And that's interesting, but now this will come with cards that allow you to use either uh, with the Ghost. It comes with, you know, you can, you can dock the Phantom 1 here, but the Phantom 1 is not currently for sale in a 2.0 format. It may be at some point, actually I expect it absolutely to be at some point, but uh, the only way to currently get the Phantom 1 is to get with that whole conversion kit stuff so you know, just just run the you know run the Phantom 2, the Sheath of Peed shuttle, you can run it by itself, you can run it with the Ghost, you can run it docked on the Ghost, you can you know, deploy it, you know, from the ghost in the middle of a game. But what's so cool about this is that it physically docks. It physically goes in there. Like, there's actually an open, empty spot in the back of this ghost. And if you're not familiar with 1.0, they had just sculpted the ghost in, in the original uh, X-Wing 1.0 with the Phantom 1 with the wings folded up, and it was, like, permanently stuck in there. And so it was a little... You know, a little weird when you had when you had the deployed one flying around, but you could still see the other one in there. I'm like, wait a second, is there two phantoms now? So this one, it physically comes out, and it's awesome. Uh, so you also, the, so that's the cool thing about this is you're actually getting two ships for, for in one box. Now it's not for the price of one because you're paying a lot more. Uh, you know, fifty bucks is certainly more than two twenty dollars ships even combined. But usually the size of a ship, the price tends to go up. So you're getting a really really large large ship. And a small ship, uh, for, and that kind of makes it a pretty good value, considering you're getting two ships here. Uh, and again, if you're a fan of Star Wars Rebels, you're gonna love the Ghost. And you're probably cursing me right now that I have the Millennium Falcon this far down in my list, and and I absolutely understand that. It's only that it, um, it's it's cheaper than the Ghost, but you're only getting one ship here. So as far as the the value, uh, it's this one is not necessarily the first thing if you're really on a strict budget and really trying to get the absolute most bang for your buck, unless unless you really like the Millennium Falcon, then maybe you get this one first. I know a lot of people would probably want to get this one first. This was one of the first ships I bought when I got into X-Wing. Uh, I, I think my, my very first purchase on, on day one was a, a core set, a slave one, and the Millennium Falcon. And then my very second purchase was like a B-Wing and a TIE Advanced because I had to get them online because I didn't have them at the store or something like that. So by all means, buy what you love. You're not going to go wrong with this. It's just if you're trying to get the absolute most bang for your buck, this one might not be one of the first purchases you make. Uh, but it is beautiful. It is a beautiful ship. For the most part, it's the same sculpt as the X-Wing 1.0 version. Uh, they, they said they've kind of redesigned it a little bit. I've I, I've done a comparison, and if you guys like what you see here, I have videos for all of these where I do unboxings. I will actually compare them in my unboxings to the X-Wing 1.0 version, so you can actually see you know, a side-by-side -side comparison. 
Um, but one of the cool things here is that it's a new paint job and they have painted in the engine glow. That's one thing they didn't do on a lot of the 1.0 stuff is they didn't paint in the engines. And here you have that nice blue engine glow that's very iconic of the Millennium Falcon. So that much is also very, very cool. Um, in you know, if you and if you're a big spender and you want to run maybe the Ghost and the Millennium Falcon together and create some dream team battles like Han Solo and Hera flying side by side, you can totally do that too. The Millennium Falcon is a turreted ship. It is a, a primary weapon turret. It's a gorgeous ship. It's very, very fun to fly. And I think you'll have a great time with it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that is... So that's most of the... Well, that's really the ships that are available at the time of me recording this video. But there's other things you can get too. There's a Hot Shots and Aces pack. Now, uh, this one is going to come with a bunch of different pilots. It's going to have a different U-Wing pilot. It's going to have a different Millennium Falcon pilot. It's going to have a lot of different pilots in there. Uh, but it's also going to have a lot of different upgrade cards that are available to only one faction. Um, if you go to FantasyFlightGames.com, you can actually... They have a list of every single card that's in there. I'm not going to talk about every card that's in there. Uh, but there's also pilots for other factions as well. This, this is one of those packs... And it's not particularly expensive, but the value of it begins to increase and increase the more different factions you play. If you play uh, Rebels, Empire, and Scum and Villainy, for example, now you're getting three factions worth of new pilots. You know, it comes with about, I, th I think, four factions per, per uh, four new pilots per faction. So you're getting a, a, a decent amount of stuff. There's nothing in here, though, for the Clone Wars factions pilots, though, so you're not going to get anything... Uh, you know, particularly awesome if you're playing Clone Wars outside of maybe some upgrades that you didn't have already. But you know, you're getting new pilots and you're getting a bunch of upgrades that might have been faction locked or restricted to only one uh, one ship or something like that. So this is actually a really good buy to get. But since there's no actual plastic in here, I have this kind of like eh, once you get past the ships, then you can look at some of the other fun things. Uh, and, and if you're at that point, there are lots of other cardboard packs that they're doing now, and these cardboard packs are cool because they're. They're not very expensive, and you're getting a lot of things that maybe you just wouldn't have had otherwise. The fully loaded pack has all the different bomb types that you could get because bombs used to be kind of restricted. Like, this new bomber would come out and it would have this really cool bomb with it, but if you wanted to run it with a different bomber, you know, you wouldn't have access to the new... So you needed to, you know, buy a whole bunch of different stuff just to make one ship work. So if you want to get... All the different bombs and, and all, all that stuff, you can get that here. Plus, there's new scenarios and stuff that you can play with here. And pretty cool. You know, again, once you got all the ships and once you're kind of into the game a little bit, you can start looking at some of these other packs. Never Tell Me the Odds as an obstacle pack. It's going to have all the different obstacles. Uh, if you Like, if you didn't have every type of asteroid or you didn't have all the gas clouds and stuff like that. You can get all of that, and, and these are things that may not come with every single, uh, you know, you, faction might not have access to these, like the gas clouds had come out with the Clone Wars starters, and if you don't play one of the Clone Wars factions, you might not have had those, right? But these are also going to come with new scenarios, which are just fun, casual game variants that you can play with a friend. Say, hey, let's play in, like, this really dense asteroid field. Okay, cool, here's the setup instructions for it. Oh, hey, let's play... In this ionizing gas cloud field in a nebula, you know, and so you can, it is just ways to change up your game a little bit. And so these are kind of fun. Um, epic battles, very similar to that. You know, there's different scenarios for epic battles, and these are cool if your collection grows really large. There's a lot of stuff where you can fly a whole wing of X Wings and move them all together as one. Um, there's multiplayer scenarios if you want to have like eight people all play the game together, everybody gets their own ship. There's rules for all of this stuff and setup diagrams and cards and all kinds of cool stuff in the epic battles set. Again, this is something for well on down. Once you're once you starting to become a veteran of the game, this is a fun way to spice up your games. Now, if you also want to play huge ships, uh, if you have big, the huge ships, like basically the capital ships from X-Wing 1.0, there's a huge ship conversion kit, which is going to convert those huge ships from 1.0 into 2.0, and it has all the cards, and has eh, freaking everything. It's got two bases. You can actually field two huge ships with this one. Now, it doesn't come with the ships themselves, but they have a redesigned base, and all that's going to be in here. So this is really nice. Um, but this does require that you have those huge ships. Sometimes you can find those huge ships from 1.0 a lot cheaper. Now, they're usually, uh, you know, like between $50 and $100 each, uh, and, and they were kind of expensive when they came out. But since they're so old, a lot of times you can find them at a steep discount. Um, and lastly, if you don't have any huge ships and you're looking to get into them, they do have the Tanta V4. Some, you know, it's it's pronounced Tanta V, even though I, I don't agree with that pronunciation. That's the canon pronunciation. I don't recommend you buy this. 
um, frankly, and, and and I'll tell you why. It's a beautiful ship. It's a beautiful model. I mean, like maybe if you want to buy, because it's a hundred dollar ship. It's not cheap. If you're on a budget, don't buy this. Um, but I mean, it's a great model. It's something cool to have on your desk. Like if you just want it as a display piece, that's fine. Um, but the thing is, there's misprints. It doesn't come with the correct maneuver dial, uh, and and you can't actually run it. I mean, I mean, they they had a an errata to the like. They basically, it came with the Imperial Raiders movement dial, or you know, so it has illegal moves that are printed on it, and so like the it's basically unplayable straight out of the box. Um, I have I got mine like six months ago and requested the replacement dial. Still haven't seen it. Still hasn't shown up. I don't know if it's ever going to show up. I don't know if they're ever going to, like, correct me. The The funny thing is, I'll tell you what's funny about it, is that the conversion kit, if you had a, a 1.0 conversion, comes with the correct dial. Now, they do say, like, all right, well, here's a chart, so this move should actually be this one. So, like, if you want to have a little printout, you can use your dial for this, but you have to have a little, you know, like, you have to print out a little sheet that has, like, the what the new move corresponds to, the corrected move. And, and it's just really, that's a really sloppy way to, to play something like this. And um, it's, you know, I'm not trying to beat Fantasy Flight Games over the head with it too much, but they screwed up here. And as a result, I don't recommend you buy the Tanta V4. I'm talking about it, though, because it exists. And it is a, still a beautiful model, but there is a serious error in here. And in and they haven't even fulfilled replacement parts. Like, they haven't even, even been able to... And it's just cardboard. They haven't even been able to get corrected cardboard printed for it yet. Um, I can still run mine, though, because I bought both a conversion kit and the new Tanta V4. I actually have... So that means I have two Corellian Corvettes. Um, so I can use the other dial. And there's a, you know, a, another dial for it for... If you wanted to run this with clones, you can also do that. But really, it's, it's just nonsense. I... I, I don't recommend you buy this. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, that's my what to buy first for the uh, for the rebels. Hopefully, you found this video helpful. If you want to learn more about these expansions and about X Wing, this is a good place for you. Uh, so make sure you click that subscribe. Look through my X Wing videos. I've got unboxings and uh, close up comparisons of every single uh, 2.0 expansion. So uh, if you want to see more. You were in the right place. All right, guys, that's all I've got. I want to thank my patrons so much for you guys' continued support. You guys are amazing and definitely help make this channel possible. If you're interested in supporting the channel, check the links in the description below. I want to thank you so much, and as always, have a great day.